Praise God. God bless you today, beloved. We come to you today in the matchless, holy, and mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Apostle Samuel Hendricks, the full gospel word of faith church, coming to you this January the 23rd, 2022, of our Lord, asking you to like this video and all video, all the likes that's coming forth, all the links that's coming forth, uplink. Uh, if you would uh, give us your vote on it, pray for us. We believe God for you, and we ask God's prayers and faith and strength and power upon your life. And praise God, pray for us as well. We're in the book of Ephesians. We've been talking about uh, the Apostle Paul and this church at Ephesus where Timothy, who was uh, the pastor, he left it past the Apostle Paul is the founder and the, uh, uh, the, the planter of this church and uh, being the oversight of it, he uh, dispatched uh, Timothy to be the, the, uh, the pastor and the bishop over this church. And consequently, he became the apostle over that ministry. Because when you're sent one, you're sent in the name of the Lord. So, but anyway, he came and Apostle Paul was writing to us and telling us all the things that the Lord has, I mean, uh, ministered and worked into his life. Because when he first came into this, he was one who was zealous. Zealous mean he was fiery and, 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 and desirous to see something happen but he had no knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he was trying to uphold the Mosaic law and he thought that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and the followers, the Lord Jesus followers were coming against the Mosaic law, the law which was given to uh, Father Abraham. Uh, and Abraham believed God and, and it, was a, it was accounted unto him for righteousness. And Abraham, amen, uh, taught it to his son Isaac and Isaac taught it to his son uh, Jacob and Jacob taught it to his 12 sons and it was a heritage of the word of the Lord but I want you to know that this word God's word is the everlasting word uh, uh, though he started through Abraham He's still yet working to everyone that believed like Father Abraham. What, what did Father Abraham do? He heard God and he obeyed God and he believed God. And it was added to him, credited to him, accounted to him for righteousness. For he was right for believing. It's good to do works. It's good to do good works. But uh, if, you, if, if faith or confidence in God Trust in what God tells you to do and what he has said is not added. That means it's without faith. It's just dead works. Works have to be mixed with faith. You have to believe God's word and then act on it and acting on God's word produces results. It pleases God. God is pleased with those who seek him and does his word and keep his word Keeping his word is not just memorizing it. Keeping his word is doing it. Be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. That pleases God. Apostle Paul here writing, and we'll just, you know, scan some of this and get on and go further, that he was introducing and letting the, 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 the Christians, the saints, at, and the people call, the people call Christians because they were Christ-like. Antioch was the first one who called themselves Christians because they were Christ-like. And Antioch, and the people at Antioch, uh, uh, studied the word of God. They heard what Paul said, and they searched the scriptures. Jesus, our Lord, said, search, get into the Bible, get into the word, search the scripture. What are you searching? What are you searching? You're searching who God is, researching who the Lord Jesus Christ is, searching who you are, searching who the Holy Ghost is. The Holy Ghost is the third person of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. They are one. 
You say, well, why is it three and yet they're one? You're going to have to ask God when you get to heaven. But you must live for him and know him, know him and live for him to get to heaven. But in the process, he'll give us revelation knowledge of our walk of him and who he is and who the third person is and who is the, the Lord, the Lamb of God, Jesus. He's also called the Word of God. But And you need to know who you are in Christ and apply it to your life. But Apostle Paul was saying to the church at Ephesus, he wrote back to encourage them. Every now we need encouragement. The body of Christ, we need to encourage one another. The Bible says, says for us uh, in the book of uh, 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 Malachi, God heard the saints. What were they doing? They was talking one to another about the Lord and what God had done. They wasn't talking about the world affairs. They wasn't talking about the pandemic. They wasn't talking about Wall Street. They were talking about what God had done. And the Bible said that God heard them. He stopped. Stop what? He made tension. He brought attention. It was brought attention to him uh, what they were talking about. And they were talking about God. And uh, it said God heard it. And then God began to write. God wrote a book of remembrance uh, so that uh, he would make a note and kept record of those who thought on his name. See, when you're thinking on something, you talk about that that's on your mind. And they thought on God. And they talked about the Lord. Don't let your mind get cluttered and full of everything else. Let your mind, the Bible says, set your, your affections on things above. And they say, let this man, what man? This man, what man? Christ man, the word of God man, be in you. So it says, God says, he heard, he hearkened. Hearken means he stopped and paid attention. It says uh, in the 18th verse of the fourth chapter of the book of Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, it says, uh, sixteen verse. Okay, yeah. The 16th verse said, They that feared or reverenced God Speak often, you know what often is, often, spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. See, hearken and heard are two different things. Hearken means he stopped and paid attention. Heard means he, he made note of it. He heard, he, he, he saw what they were doing. He understood what they were doing. And a book of remembrance, was written uh, before him for them that feared or reverent the Lord and that thought on his name. They shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels and I will spare them as a man spares his own son that serve him. The son that serve. The son that don't serve, you know them, but you don't, they're not as memorable as the ones that serve him, the one that love him. Serve means you love him. You don't just do for him out of duty. You do for him because you love him. And it says, and, and, and then they shall return and discern the one that serve him and love him and thought on him and talked about him will discern. They are discerners. They don't just take everything face value and they don't spend time with foolishness stuff. It says they discern they, they, they discern between the righteous and the wicked. Why are you making a difference between the righteous and the wicked? Because you spend time with foolishness, you become foolish. You spend time with righteous people, you act like them. That's who you are. You take up that attitude. That's who you are. So you're trying to be better than other folks. It's not trying to make a mark where you can size yourself up over. The Bible tells us the word of God is our measuring stick to check us out so we'll know where we stand with God. Knows where we stand with God. So it's not about measuring yourself with others and seeing if you are better than they or as good as they. That's not what that's about. 
The book should do, the word of God does that. The book, the word of God measures us up and tells us where we are. And if we're not there, the word of God is the one that brings us up into the place where we're supposed to be. But if you don't take the measuring stick, you don't take the medicine, you don't take the word of life, which is the word of instructions. Instructions is the way of life. You 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 don't you don't you don't you don't walk in the right uh, mentality, and neither do you uh, conduct yourself in the right manner. You're always looking at other people and talking about what they're doing, and they're looking at you and talking about what y'all doing. You're on this plane instead of looking up up at God. Now you encourage one another. You see somebody in need, you help them. But there's people who don't want to hear. They're antichrist. And I'm not trying to pick on nobody, but you need to know the difference. If you say everybody's the same, that's not so. If you get associated with people who steal, they're going to think you a thief also. If you associate with people who lie and y'all hang around, y'all friends, y'all buddy, they're going to say you a liar too. You don't have to be a liar or a thief, but if you if you if you spend time with them, if they if that's what your 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 association and fellowship is, that's who you are noted with. People note you by your actions. And not only worried about people noting you, it's considering what God says. Now if God sends you to somebody who's in conditions like that, it's a it's a, it's, it's more than more than just a, a notion. God wanna help change that person. And you go in there as a witness. You can't witness something that you're not a part of. Witness what? Witness Jesus, his greatness and what he done for you. Witness how he changed you from a sinner to a saint. How you used to lie and you don't lie no more. You used to steal, you don't steal anymore. Because you have a mind to do what the scriptures say. The Bible says more blessed to give than receive. It also says if you sow your seed, God's going to restore it to you. Okay? If you're a giver, you're not a taker. Now you can receive those because if you if you if you're giving but you don't know how to receive, you miss blessings because you need to know how to receive. But we'll get into that another time. It said, but it said, discern between the righteous and the wicked, between them that serve God and him that serve him not. Now going back to Paul, Paul check the church out because sometimes there are people come in the church that's not saved. And they don't come in to get saved. They come in to tear up the church. They come in to brawl, cause confusion. They come in to be a dis distraction. They come in as the devil's advocate. Even some ministers, quote unquote, come in that's not God's. They don't go, go in to edify the church. The Bible says we're supposed to edify and encourage one another. The truth edifies us. It helps us. It cleanses us. It feeds us. It provide for our thirst. It provides for our life. It gives us life, gives us revelation. What revelation? The thing that God is doing, the thing that God is pleased with. And it causes us to grow. You grow in grace in the word of God and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Apostle Paul was saying, he uh, talking about the church and he says, they always greet them with the same grace be to you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless be the God and Father. So you always give God honor and respect. Bless be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Okay? He blessed us in heavenly places. And guess what? Those heavenly places also apply to our life. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined, preplanned us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according uh, to the goodwill of his pleasure, to the praise of his glory, the glory of his grace, wherein he have made us acceptable. We're accepted in Jesus, not accepted outside of him, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he have abound toward us 
and all wisdom and prudence abound toward us. What does that mean, abound toward us? He have directed to us. He have come to, to give us wisdom and understanding so we'll know who we are and who he is. I read, uh, and I don't know if I'll go over it right now, but I'll just, just quote it out of Jeremiah, the ninth chapter. I believe it's, uh, what did I say? Jeremiah ninth and, uh, oh gosh, I said it wasn't going to go there, but it's not good to, to say something and not give good reference. And it's good for people to check it out. Uh, Jeremiah 9 and uh, 24, uh, uh, that he says he, he wants you to know him and that you know who he is. Who is he? He's a God that executes love and kindness. See there? That's the way he don't come to destroy, tear you up, destroy your home, make a, make a melee and a mess of it. He come to to, to execute love and kindness and doing what's right, judgment. When you say the word judgment, you're thinking condemning for sin. If he come to deliver you from sin, he's not coming to condemn you. He's coming to deliver you from sin and have you to have a, a, a righteous minded, minded so you don't be thinking about sin. You're thinking about doing those things which are good and pleasant and right before God. It says here, execute righteousness, uh, a kindness, uh, loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things, God delight. Now, Apostle Paul's teaching that he said, God abound toward us in wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. It was a mystery that God, the, 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 the creator, wanted us. He didn't just make us and there we are to ourselves. We go ahead like the, uh, like the uh, atheist and like the agnostic uh, say and the Darwinian say that uh, we, we came from slime. Where did slime come from? And all of a sudden... We just decided to grow, come out of it, crawl out of it, and evolve. No, 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 you were created. And that story about which come first, the chicken or the egg? Well, the chicken come first because without a chicken, you can't have an egg. And without a chicken, a egg, a egg won't develop and hatch. So you need the, the created, which is the chicken, and the egg, which come forth as a reproduction of the chicken. So God says, as you see in Genesis, he said, let everything reproduce after its kind. He, he made, and then he said, for that that he made to reproduce. So God is a, a God of production, reproduction. He's a God of life. He's not a God of destruction and failure. He's not a God of disease and disaster. Uh, we all, uh, 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 man said to man, I always say, that's an act of God. You don't even know God. You don't know his ways. Because you know his ways, you know that's not him. Uh, 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 destruction is a, is a way of sin and, dis, and, and rebellion, contrary to God. It's a way of darkness and not light. It's a way of wickedness and not righteousness. Come on. You know the difference. Make it plain. So it says here, and 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 having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to the good pleasure which he had purposed in himself. Now he want to reveal it to us. So why didn't he want to reveal it before? Because men, like Father Adam, God gave him instruction, said, of all the trees in the garden you can eat. But the tree that's in the middle, in the midst of the garden, don't eat from it. For in the day that you do eat, so he tells you what's going to give you precaution of what's going to happen. The day that you do eat, see, he didn't make you a robot where you couldn't choose, but he gave you the facilities where you can make a decision. God doesn't want us to be zombies that follow uh, 
a, a set deal and we, we can't think. He made us where we have a volition. What is a volition? Ability to choose, ability to think. And then he tells us about, he gives us, he gives us the prerequisite and gives us the, 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 the good and the evil of it. The good of it is, one thing, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, if man had not touched, the, had not ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he wouldn't have to know what evil was. Some people say, well, you know, you need to know what it is so you don't do it. No. If you know from knowledge, but not from participation, from doing it, if you have revelation of it, you can you can avoid it. See? So uh, they had knowledge, but, they, the, but, but the Bible says there are three things that's in us. If you're breathing, these three things are in you. The lust of the eye. Your eyes see things. You always see something, something flashy, something new, something you hadn't seen before. The lust of the flesh, something that, boy, that show, I bet that would show taste good or that would feel good. And the pride of life, those three things are in us. You say they're in there? Yeah. Why? Because that's the choice we made when we disobeyed God. We lust for things. Lust had Lust, lust ain't just about sex. But when you say the word lust, people are always thinking about sex. And that's where the devil put our mind to think that sex is the only thing. And sex is supposed to be holy and it's supposed to be sanctified and it's supposed to be where it can be what God made it to be, productive, reproductive, and between the husband and the wife, something that God has said is sacred between those two. In the book of Proverbs, it says, and also not only Proverbs, but also in the book of Solomon, it says, God says, it's so beautiful the, the, between the husband and the wife. That's there. Not between men and women of everybody. And not between men and men and women and women. It's holy. It's sacred. And the enemy try to make it where it's, 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 it's exciting, but there's no there's no respect and honor to it. Come on, somebody. We, look, we got to walk right. We got to walk up in the middle of the truth and walk right. And in that middle of the truth that we're walking right, we see what, what's going to be good for our life. What is right for us? What is, what is the good, the Bible says, and the right way? So the good and the right way is what protects us and keeps us. The eye sees something. The lust of it doesn't mean you've fallen. The lust is the is the fleshly liking, liking of it, the desire. That's all the lust is. Let me give you another word for lust so you won't get lost on that. It's desire. Desire is good if it's, if it's from God to do the right thing. But a desire for something just for self-gratification, self-pleasure, self, just to please me, I don't care what it does to anybody else. I don't care if there's some rules I'm breaking. I don't care if I'm broke going the wrong way. I don't care if I'm doing whatever that, that's going to hurt somebody else. This is what I want and I'm going to get it. Don't say you ain't, you've never done that because then you'll be lying. Don't say that. Because that, that nature came to us when we failed. Before that, all things were ours. Before Adam disobeyed God, all things are ours. You didn't have death. You didn't have poisonous spiders. You didn't have poisonous snakes. They didn't attack you. Lion wouldn't attack a man. You wouldn't have uh, death. You wouldn't have sickness. You didn't have disease. But when the disobedience, high, high treason came in, it brought all that in. Now, just, just to tell you what the origin of that was. But God didn't leave us that way. See, he, he made us and he made this world for us and then he gave us this earth, this world to, to, uh, uh, to rule over. He said rule and have dominion. Rule means to be managed, take care of, uh, 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 produce and bring life out of it. That's what it meant. It, 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 and, and, and it's not being dominant over people. It's being dominant over or managing what's been given to you. And so the enemy 
uh, people saying, what about slaves? That didn't come from God. That come from, that come from, from, from men wanting to be a ruler and dominance over other people. I'm just letting that, you know, our mom used to say, put the lid on that and let it smother. I'm letting the, the savoriness get in there so you can think about that. No matter, I don't care what their education is, what their status, what they, uh, they record they've done things, that, that sin in them make them want to be dominant over someone else or fearful of someone else who has an ability that they don't have. God give everybody an ability and a gift. And that ability and a gift for you to honor God with and also be a blessing to the humanity. But people want to try to lord over everybody else. That's not the way to do that. The one who is who is who is master over something, he's a servant to everybody because his ability makes him to be the manager and the caretaker of everything that's there to make sure it's run right in order. Order. God is a God of order. He's not a God of disorder. Let that smother for a few minutes. If you know something, know some places that have been out of order and people are fighting and they're one on one side, one on the other, Hatfield and McCoy. We don't have to have Hatfield and McCoy. We got that right here in the United States. And within, we got it in the church. People trying to be uh, superior over each other. All of us supposed to find, mind the same thing the Bible says. What's the same thing? The word. The same rule. What rule is that? What the Lord Jesus Christ said. And if we're minding it, that there's no be no difference in somebody on one side or the other because they ain't but Jesus. Ain't no two or three Jesus, only one. And I know you like me now. Anyway, he says here... <laughs> That the dispensation of the fullness of time, when the time is set, the time was coming. And I believe we're in the time right now that time has already done its year because the Lord is soon to come. That we need to be making haste, making haste to, to, to get about God's business, what he put us on this earth for, what he called us to, so we can allow as witnesses. If, now, if you're going to be a witness, you're going to have to have uh, evidence, you have to have a word from the one who is over you that sent you to be his witness to be able to tell somebody something. You're going to have to be the witness who has the word and the power with the word. you called to this. And I know you love me now. He says, in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in have who Christ, both that which is in heaven and that which is on earth, even in him. That's why when you're born again, you have a residency in heaven. Yet you are on the earth because you're here as a witness. You're here as a witness to, to uh, of Christ, not a witness of you, not the witness of other folks. People are always they're carrying other people's torch. Carry the torch that God called us for. Speak the word that the Lord has given us. Be the word. You, you, the Bible says you are a letter of God, a letter, a, a communicative information of the hand of God. You are because you're a witness. Why? Because God did something for you. Because God is in you. Because you know who he is and who you are in him and your purpose in him. Yes, you have to go to school. Yes, you have to go to work. Yes, you 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 have a family and you 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 are a husband and wife and they become a household and 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 then the business to help people have uh, 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 work where they can have currency where they can be able to take care of their family. But you don't just labor to take care of your household and your family. That's a good thing. If you don't take care of your family, you you're 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 a non-believer. Call yourself going to church, wear a big cross, carry a Bible, whatever. If you don't provide for your family, you're, you're, you're a non-believer. It says, that's what they call an infidel. And, but you're not here just for that. You're here to make sure that the, since you are the church 
and you 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 to you to build up the church, speak the things of the Lord to encourage the church and to win souls. Cause Jesus coming back, and He's coming back for those who has His word in Him, in them. If His word is not in you, He's not coming back for you. And I know you love me now. And He says here. In whom also we have obtained inheritance. See, you are inheritor. Inheritance of the kingdom of God. Inheritance of the blessing and promise of God. Being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will. He did that. This is his will he's doing. He's working his, he's not working this after uh, uh, the stock market, Neiman Marcus or whatever. He's working this after his own will. Listen to what he says here. That we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. You, to, you, you are his praise. You are his praise and of, the, of his glory, of his, of his manifested power, in whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believe you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You were sealed. Glory to God. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession until the praise of his glory. What does all that mean? That means you, the down payment when he sealed you, that's saying you're his. He's saying you're his. He called you his. He said you're his. He called you, he claimed you. I'm your God. You know you sealed because you received Christ. You got born again. You received his spirit. You say he's my Lord and my God. Now you have to live that way. You can't live any other way. Any other way is less than what you're called to do. Sealed to the purchased possession of the praise of his glory. See, in other words, when he come back, he gonna come for those who are his, those who are ready, but also who are his. Those who are obedient while he's gone. Not, not like the servant. There's a parable that he taught. It was three servants. One, he gave a gift. He gave five talents to this gift. The talents were like money. They use a term in an equation of money. One had uh, $5,000. And to another, he gave two talents, like $2,000. And to uh, the one, he gave $1,000. So each one had a talent. And they were supposed to take this talent, like money, out to the stock market. The, the world is like the stock market. You taking the talent that God gives you and you put it to use out there. You put it to use for the glory of God to help people. The one who had the five, he put his to use and he gained five more. The one who had the two, he gained two more and so he had four. The one who had the one wrapped it up in a napkin, dug a hole and put it in and buried it. When the Lord came back, he came back to reckon to see what his money has done, what his what the what his his servants, uh, his stewards of his goods have done, cause he he gonna reward them for their labor for their faithfulness. The first one, he gained five, and he said, "Lord, I, you gave me five here. I've gained five more." And he said, "Come, blessed of the Lord, your servant, you." I gave you five, you gained 10. He said, blessed are you. I'm a, I want you to be ruler over many nations. The, the second one, he, came, he had two. He said, Lord, you gave me two and I gained two more beside that. And he gave it to him. He said, you have uh, gained two more. Blessed are you. You're going to be ruler over many nations. But the one he had buried it, he come and he said, Lord, he brought it to him. He said, now, I know you are a hard man. You don't gather, you gather where you have not strung. And so I make sure that I didn't lose nothing. 
So I'm bringing you this one gift and I'm laying it here before you. He said, you lazy and you wicked servant. You knew I was a man that not gather where I have not strung. And instead of putting my money out to use, instead of using my, my resources so that it could bring me more resources, he says, you uh, chose to be disobedient and rebellious and do nothing. And you thought, well, if I brought back what I got, ain't nothing lost. He says, take what he got and give to the one that have 10 and cast him in the outer darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. He says, for to them that have, God's going to give them more. But to them that have not, that means have not done with what their gifts, their talents and whatever. He says, I'm going to take that from them. And he says, and he said, they're going to be, they're going to be weeping and gnashing because they refuse to do what I called them to do. So you have to find out what your gift is and put it to use. And God will give you increasing of other gifts and other talents. Put them to use. Don't sit on it. Don't harbor it. Don't, don't, don't become uh, melancholy and say, well, I, I don't know what to do. I'm scared. I ain't going to do nothing. God says, I'm going to hold you accountable. If I come for my account, I want my stuff. I want to see what you've done with it. I've given you charge over it. I gave you talents. I gave you training. I gave you wisdom. I told you what to do. He says, well, I was afraid. Well, in the book of Revelation, it says, the liars, the whoremongers, and those that are afraid are going to be cast in hell into the lake of fire. Hell, and then hell going to be cast into the lake of fire. Two compartments. So you say, well, I was afraid. I was afraid. God said, I didn't give you the spirit of fear. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to charge you. for. You say, well, I brought back. I didn't, I didn't waste your stuff. He said, yes, you did because you didn't put it to use where it could gain more. And I, cause I wanted to reward you for your faithfulness, but I can't reward you because you refused to do what I told you to do. You held a, uh, 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 let's, let's find a hole and stay in it and be safe. God says, you do what I told you to do. I'm with you. You go and I'll go before you to make your way straight. I'll protect you if you obey me. Don't hide and take my resources. Don't do anything with it. Because I'm coming back with, and my reward is with me to them that obey me, them that love me. Whew. So Apostle Paul told them this. And he told them that uh, in whom that you, you trusted, you received the Holy Spirit of promise, the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession until the praise of the glory. Where, where have also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. See, he heard reports from other people. That church that you started in Ephesus, them people are growing. The, the churches, things are happening. People, lives are being changed. They are benevolent to those who are in need. They're looking out and they're, 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 they're a pillar in the community. The people come to the church instead of going to the city for help. They come to the church to find out what's going on. And he says here, I've heard of your faith of, in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love to all the saints and cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. I pray for you. And every, every time I pray, I mention of you, mention the name of that Ephesus church and that pastor and, and, that, and that body of Christ over there, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. On the, on the knowledge is the word of God and the spirit of revelation and wisdom come as you get into the knowledge and let the knowledge bring forth the wisdom and revelation that the eyes of their understanding being enlightened so that they can discern by the spirit uh, uh, what is the hope of their calling see we yet don't know the whole hope of our calling we yet don't know that in other words, we know to a purpose. We know to a point. I'm saying no to a point because we don't know everything. There are things yet to come. But we should, as believers, I mean all of us, young and old, man and woman, boy and girl, 
should come into knowledge of knowing what our purpose and our part in God and the Lord Jesus Christ, and he and he he'll increase that in us. And it says here, uh, and I call him what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance of saints, how rich you are in Christ, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his, of his mighty power. We're not just here without any ability or power holding on, waiting for the Lord to come and hiding so we don't be harmed or any evil come to us. With the power of God is here for us to advance in God, advance and do the things that God called us to do, to be the witness, to let people know. There's some people out there waiting to hear a word that only you can tell them. There's someone waiting for you to pray the prayer of faith for something to happen for them. And God won't do it until you do it. He won't do anything till you pray. He won't do anything till you say. Say what he said. Which he, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, the same power, and set him in uh, at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Since he's the head and we the body, whatever portion or whatever place we position we are in the body, the finger, the hand, the eye, the feet, the toe, you still got power with God. You have mighty power. It says you... You, uh, all the powers of darkness, the principalities and power in darkness, uh, dominion, they're put under under you. They're not supposed to be on top of you. They're supposed to be under you. You know what the word of God says and you believe that and you exercise your faith and your, 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 your gifts that God gives you to put the devil under. Don't make you be defeated. No matter if somebody is trying to persecute you or say something against you, you get wisdom from God on what to do. And I always know you're the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. you more than a conqueror. The one who conquers went out and, and destroyed and beat that other country or company up, and you get the goods from it. What you get it for? So you can spread it out to, to first to honor God with and to bless other people so they can see the goodness of the Lord. And you who he had quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin, where in past times you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince, that's the devil, the prince and the power of the air, the spirit now that work in the children of disobedience, among whom also you all had your conversation, that means your way of life in past time, in the lust, see there, the lust of our flesh, the desires of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and of our mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. We were the children of destruction, but God didn't want us to be destruction. That's why somebody got to you with the gospel, you heard the word, and you responded. You responded, wasn't an emotional response, it was a heartfelt response that you received Christ, that you came and acknowledged, I'm a sinner, I need Jesus, who is the Savior, as my Lord. And you and you move, you pass like somebody dying. You pass from death, from a dead life, unto Christ you came alive when you got born again. Even as others, but God who was rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together in Christ. By grace are you saved. When we was dead in our sins, Jesus died for us. He didn't wait for us to decide we want to follow him before he died. He finished the work so that we he could be the door to come to God. He could be the, the sacrificed lamb to pay for our sins. They used to sacrifice a lamb once a year. Every every once the the uh, the the high priest, Aaron, would go in to the holiest of holies. Everybody couldn't go in there. And those that could go in there, they tied a rope around his leg. If he went in there and he didn't get himself before the Lord. See, that's why holiness is necessary. He didn't come before the Lord to prepare himself before he go before God. He didn't get things right with him and God. How you get things right? 
acknowledge before God that you want this. I want uh, God. I come to minister in the book volume of the book. It is written. You, I come to do your will. I come to minister this sacrificial uh, 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 offering to pay for the sins of the people. But I, I have to come clean. I have to come before you. If there's anything in me, uh, cleanse me. Make me clean. See, they, they talked about washing clothes. Washing is necessary. They say uh, cleanliness is next to godliness. Well, uh, it, it ain't just the clothes need to be cleansed. It's the conscience of the man and the woman and their mind. The conscience is the thought processes. The mind is the choosing the choosing ability of your mind. It has to be before God. You say, how can I cleanse it? The Bible says, how can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed, taking heed, take, taking heed means stop and pay attention. Look at, hear and receive and believe what the word says. That's how you cleanse your mind. That's how you cleanse it, by putting, putting the word in there so the word can cleanse your mind. Because the enemy, he knows, you, 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 the devil knows, Apart from God, you have nothing. Apart from Christ, there's no good thing in us. So when the word is in us, the word it comes in to do, do the work, the cleansing work in us, and to keep us clean, and to help us to stay clean. The word doesn't come in to condemn us because sin already did that. He doesn't say, well, you lost, you just an old nasty thing. No, I don't want you. God loved you because you were in his mind before you came to the earth. When you came to earth, you was his desire and his plan to come here so you can be a witness, so you can know Christ for yourself and be a Christian, be a Christman yourself. I'm almost done for this session. And it says, lust of the flesh and fulfill the desires of the flesh or the lust of the flesh, lust, desire, same word. And of the man, see, and of the man, and were by nature children of wrath, even at others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, what happened? He quickened us together with Christ. So before you receive Christ, God made a place for you in him. That's how you could come to God. That's how you could come to the Lord Jesus Christ. But you first had to hear the gospel so you can make the choice. The, the Bible says, how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard about? And how can they believe except someone has been sent to tell them? When they tell you, you believe. That's why Paul says, I heard the, I was I was excited about you and I prayed for you when I heard that you received the word of your salvation. They heard it and they believe and they receive. And they receive there in Christ. Now you have to grow in grace. You have to study the scriptures to know who Christ is. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord. Even be yoked up to him. So how me yoked up him? Through the word, through saying, Lord, I want to love you and I want to praise you and I want to serve you. I want to please you. And those things that doesn't please God, I don't want to have no part with that. I only be a part of that which pleases God. I want to satisfy God. Somebody say, well, what, what, you don't, there's nothing else in life to do? Hey, everything else in life comes through that. Everything in life comes beautiful. Everything in life works. Everything in life has a, a place of stability and a foundation and for growth and productivity. I'm going to close. It says, but God who is rich in mercy with he loved us, even when we were dead in Christ, that quickened us, made us alive together in Christ by grace are you saved and have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that we should be, or that the ages, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding greatness, the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, 
See, you're not saved of yourself, of your going doing. You, your belief in Christ would make what save you. And your constant walking in him to grow in him is what continue to make you be more developed. And get, let, me tell you, let me say this. I got to say this right quick before I say this. Because I, I heard something said the other day. And I didn't, I didn't say anything, but I was listening. Sometimes when we're having hard times and we're doing we, what we already understand that God wants us to do, we're doing it by, at best we know how, but trouble seem to be happening. You're growing. God is gro growth is coming uh, like a child. When the child grows, the child has to change from being from sucking the Bible, I mean by bottle or sucking or sucking his mother's breast. He grows from that. Now he can eat meat. He can eat pablum and eat uh, eat uh, solid food. Then he grows, as he's eating solid food, he grows where now he he knows how to take care of himself and how to conduct himself in a manner because he's been trained. Then when he grows, as he go out, he has instructions in, him, in his mind and heart and his life where he knows how to conduct himself when he's out there with the public because he's been trained. And then he grows into, or she grow, he or she grows into a young man or young woman, and and they 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 can be reproductive in their doings, in their life. That that people say something different about that person. I know it, and you hadn't even told him you you a Christian. You know why you never told him? Cause the way you do, the way you live, the way you act, and you ain't you ain't you you're not wearing a sign saying I'm a Christian. Christ is in you, and they, your traits, the way you follow after God, make people say, "Nah, -uh, there's something different about them." They, I know they, I know that's a Christian. I know Christian. That's one of them. And when you meet another Christian, your spirit and their spirit witness with one another because Christ in you and Christ in them is the same. No, Christ is not different in one. One got more Christ than the other, so he's more holier than that. No. You can't be no more holier than that. You can only be holy. That's what you can be. Only holy as you are. Holy in Christ. And you can't make yourself holy. You can't, that's why you can't be holier. You're only holy in God. Because God is holy. And God said, be ye holy for I'm holy. He didn't say be more holy because I'm holy. He said, be holy for I'm holy. It's this term about people saying you're more holier than thou. They, they're trying to embarrass you for wanting to be, to please God. And your pleasing God is not trying to measure yourself with other people because that's according to the flesh. The Bible says, as even as it says in um, as in as in the book of uh, uh, Isaiah, the plumb line. The plumb line is a, something that uh, that a that a carpenter does to make sure that the house is even. They put it in the corner. It's a string. And with a, with a weight at the bottom of it, he'll put it in the corner of the house to see if there's if there's something awkward about it. And that plumb line, that plumb line should go straight in the middle. Oh, I feel something right now. Glory to God. Ha! The plumb line of the word of God is right in the middle of you. The plumb line of the word of God makes you who you're supposed to be. The word brings you into evenness with God because you are in him. You don't have to make yourself. You believe your way by obeying God. When you try to make yourself, people always want to see what, what I've achieved and I'm better than you. What, how, how many you got? I got three. How many you got? All of it belongs to God and all of it go to God. And if it's anything, it's to be a blessing to God and a help to humanity. So the plumb line is to line our lives up so we can be pleased with God by the word. The word lines us up and tells us if we're pleasing to God. And that way you have, Paul said, I'm not condemned. There's no condemnation to them that in Christ Jesus. Ain't no condemnation. God don't condemn you. We shouldn't condemn one another. Don't condemn somebody. Now, if they're not right and they're acting, try to reason with them, encourage them. People they don't maybe they don't know they ain't been taught. If they've been taught and they doing that, well you have to pray for them. Go on. Then, but uh, John said this. I'm closing with this. John said, "There, there's, there's, there's a sin you don't pray for. You leave it alone. But there's some you see them. They're not quite right. Pray for them and let God work it out. You're the agent of Christ in the earth. But then there's some." 
they set on doing it their way. Then I ain't, I, I'm, I'm going to do this. So don't, you don't pray for them. You leave them alone. And then go, don't go around condemning them, talking about them, because God, maybe they'll listen to God. Maybe they'll get into enough pressure. Maybe some hardship come. Maybe some accident they almost got into will bring them to their senses. Whatever. I don't know. I, I can't measure that out. That's God's wisdom and judgment. And if, and if not God doing that, if God's hand moved back, do you know if God's hand moved back, the devil tried to kill everybody? He's the killer. He's the, he's the murderer. He's the great assaulter. He's the rapist. He's the homosexual. He's the vile person. He's the perverter. And he, he, he hates God and he, he hates you because God loves you and he's out to destroy anything that looks like, resembles like, or God has a desire to please and bless. God has a love for, God love him, he hates it because he hates God. And he tried to get you to hate God. You need to know who's trying to befriend you and what, who, what they believe and what they like. Help me up in here, Holy Ghost. And I love you. I hope you like me. But you got to love me. That you got to do. So in the name of Jesus Christ, we come stopping of this portion of the service that we believe God for God's grace and mercy to make the difference. Lord, let, let my gift be used for your glory. Let my gift be a blessing to humanity. Let what's been said, honor and glory come to your name and praise to your name in edification and blessing and conviction not condemnation, conviction, which makes us think about and make a choice to do the right thing toward God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And your house, your family, in the name of Jesus. Lord, send this word out. Let the Holy Ghost touch this person, heal them, whatever the case may be, whatever circumstance they're going through, whatever they're in, if they're bound, if they're in darkness, if a threat come against their life, Lord, to break that threat. If they're uh, in confusion and the enemy trying to make them do harm to themselves, let that stop right now. I break it in Jesus' name. I loose upon them peace. I loose upon them the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and add no sorrow. I loose upon them the joy of the Lord, which is their strength. I loose up the evil. I loose up on them the power of God that, that, that raised Jesus from the dead. It quickens, quicken their bodies. Quicker somebody's about to go down. Come up in Jesus' name. Somebody about to lose their life. Come back in Jesus' name. Be made whole. Hear this word. Let this word work in you. Let God, Jesus, work in you. The sons of righteousness, God's people, the ones who have been picked out and set apart and destined for God, come forth in Jesus' name. Ye servants of the Lord. Hear this word. Come up. Come forth. Go forth in Jesus' name. Do the work of the Lord. Do the work of the Lord. Let the work of the Lord be upon you. Let your gift be manifest before God. Be the witness with power in Jesus' mighty name. And to God be the glory until we meet again, beloved. This is Apostle Samuel Hendricks, your friend, your brother, your minister, your apostle. Say to you, God love you, and I do too. Be blessed in Jesus' name and in his blood. Amen.